speaking first in English, Armenian and then in English. Uh, we're at that stage uh, in diaspora and life where we can't speak only one language perhaps, or not everyone understands one language. And sometimes it becomes uh, almost uh, repetitious to have to go back and forth. But I may, uh, with your forbearance, try to switch off and back and forth from Armenian uh, to English. Um, this is a very uh, important time of year for us. We gather annually to remember the Armenian Genocide. This is the 97th year and we're looking toward the 100th anniversary, many with expectation, many with fear, many with different uh, emotions, but nonetheless we are here today uh, to remember our loss of a nation, loss of a homeland, uh, not only of people and uh, need to continue to commemorate and remember until justice uh, prevails. It may not happen in our lifetime, but we don't give up. We continue. Uh, secondly, I was in um, Yerevan in November uh, because Armenia was commemorating the thousandth and fiftieth anniversary of Ani, the mm, proclamation of Ani as the capital of Bagratuni, Armenia, the Bagratuni kingdom. And as you all know, Ani is that wonderful, mystical city, huge city with its numerous churches and public palaces and buildings. And I've now been to what is Turkey now three times. And this last trip that I took with uh, Vartiter and others was for me the most painful because uh, we passed through Igdir and to Kars and to Ani. And these are not lands that were lost a thousand years ago. These were lands that were lost in 1920. Igdir was the home of uh, famous Armenians, Avedi Saharonyan, Droganayan, General Dro. Uh, Kars was an Armenian capital and was incorporated into the First Republic of Armenia. In my four volumes that I write about, I write in detail how it became, came back to Armenia in 1919 and 1920. It had become a part of the Russian Empire in 1878. So this particular trip was probably the most painful. And by coincidence, by coincidence, the, my last volume um, came out exactly while I was in Kars and Ani uh, is dedicated, a conference series dedicated to Kars and Ani, and I just want to say that um, we remember Ani also as we remember the Armenian Genocide, because it's also a victim and um, in, uh, in danger. Menka menkas tāpēr ansialenku gāmkā menkas haieik šādā homāļā polos, Բայց տարբեր երկերներու մեջ ծնածենք եւ մերցածենք եւ տարբեր ինքնություններու խնդիրներ ունեցածենք Լեբանանը հայը կամ Սուրիա հայը հանգիստ է հայալալով շատ չեր մտածերթե իր ինքնության մասին Բոսը հայը Ամերիկա հայը մտածեր իր ինքնության մասին Who are we why are we uh, so the question of identity is a very important uh, issue, and we all grew up from different backgrounds. And those of us who grew up in America, there's some of us here, not so many, but some of us who grew up in America, uh, had uh, very serious identity questions, identity uh, crises. Uh, I was uh, born in the small community of California, a farming community, and we had 12 Armenian families. I had no Armenian connections, and I'm the last person that should have become a scholar of Armenian studies, because 
ոչ հայրեն կգարտա է, ոչ կկրե է, ոչ ոչ հասկնա է մեր խարպերտի պարպարով խոսային կիշմը, բայց եվ հերու է, եվ հանքիշ չէ հայոլալով, I wasn't very comfortable being an Armenian, I wanted to become, in those years, when we were young people, in the 1930s, 1940s, it was not multiculturalism, it was not encouraged, we were encouraged to become Anglo and white as quickly as we could, and, and we wanted to be that. And so, even though the genocide, everybody in my community of 12 families, everybody was had at least one survivor of the Armenian genocide. But we as a younger generation, we tended to tune it out. Chenk was it was so. Մեր գյանքը դարպեր էր, մեր ավրումները դարպեր էին, մեր կուզենք ծուղլիլ և լավ հալալ ամերիկացիներ։ Առաջի թուրկը, որում ես հանդիպած էր, դաստին են դարիգան է, վրեզնո առաջի դարին համասորան երթայի, և այն դարին Եվ ես իպր երնասատ հետակը կրված կաղը գանջան։ I went to San Francisco for the Japanese, signing of the Japanese peace treaty, this already in 1951, six years after World War II. And there I was, you know, I was, I'm fat now, I was fat then too. But this fat little boy, American boy, found a way to go down to the main floor where all the delegates were, you know. So, you know, Gromyko and, or Molotov, I can't remember who it was, was, was next to me and others. If Hungar, suddenly, uh, I saw a man with a Turkish flag in his lapel. The star and the, uh, the, 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 the moon, moon and star. And here I am, a young kid, not very secure about being an Armenian, and yet uh, this man is standing in front of me, and I had to let him know, you know, so we're talking about identity. It works in mysterious ways. Yevais Martun betka haskatsane mor yes haya. Yev inch bet yev vositus svis gzarmer shaltara. Եվ ինչ պիտես եմ երել, կիտեմ, որ ավուշվամը բիտի ես ոչ դիկի դեղ, իմ մատ կիտեմ, որ ավուշվամը բիտի ես ոչ դիկի դեղ, իմ մատ կիտեմ, որ ավուշվամը բիտի ես ոչ դիկի դեղ, իմ մատ կիտեմ, որ ավուշվամը բիտի ես ոչ դիկի բախցած, ոչ չէ բախցած, սիպս հարորով անգամ առակ էր, որ դեմ ետ ոս մայ վրս թրկ էր այլ ես էր այլ էր, 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 uh, I didn't know Armenian, so I went to Beirut after I graduated from the University of California for one year and uh, studied with Simon Baratsyan and others, and I studied 20 hours a day in order to learn Armenian. And uh, I still don't speak so fluently, but I was able to learn to read and write and allow me to do my research and uh, publish this multi-volume series on the Republic of Armenia. After many years, um, my sons were among the first to went, go to historic Armenia in the early 1980s. And since that time, many groups have gone, some of you have gone to historic Armenia. I've been asked as I grew older and became better known, why don't you go? Everyone is going, go see your places and so forth. Uh, and I never wanted to go. I didn't want to go not because I was afraid. Uh, մնացած պուզերներն էր եմ խարպերտի վանի մոշի դատրը կաղաքնելի երկավաները։ 
Yev Der Chagasiv, in the final, when I did decide that we would go, six years ago was our first trip to historic Armenia. The irony of it is that I traveled with a Turk, uh, a professor at the University of Michigan, whose name is Gutchik, a full blooded Turk. Yet, Zarman Aliyev, the Senator, Mink or Turk Paragal the same. This, this, I'm not sure this knee-jerk reaction to think, I had a knee-jerk reaction. But it's obvious that in the head of the people who are in the Benagad and the Pogada, Turkey had to jump with them. And the Shanagad and Borosh Pongad Pokhodzin, they've changed as well. And we find that there are some scholars, some of them who are willing to not only accept what happened to the Armenians, but really feel that they need to do something about it. She's one of those. Uh, that was the beginning of our uh, journeys, um, and uh, I know I'm taking a long time, but I just have to express this. Uh, all these journeys were very difficult for us, very difficult and confusing, full of contrasts, and we haven't figured out the contrasts yet. Uh, for example, the first city we visited was Trabzon. Trabizon in Armenian history has a very bad name. Trabizon is a place on the Black Sea where 1895-96 massacres began in Trabizon and spread everywhere throughout the Armenian plateau. In 1915, they took Armenian women and children and put them on boats and went into the Black Sea and dumped them overboard. And four years ago, a young man from Trabizon went to Istanbul and put a gun to the head of Haram Dink and shot him in the head. So that's Trabizon, and a bad city. Uh, and yet, at the same time, when we went to Trabizon, we met other kinds of Turks, uh, which, as I say, is confusing. We met a, a playwright, Bermat Arich, Anunan Nejatir. Turkey. But Nejatin Mezihrab events, he invited us events, Tadronim, events Kumba Rachi Ankam. They're doing their first reading of a play that they're going to present. And uh, what, did, what was the play that they were going to prepare in this first reading? It was Habak Baronyan's. Babasar Akbar. Turkiren was for Tarkmas Turkirani. Yeah, Pemi Marabidi Bematarei Trabizoni Mesh. Abu Baranyani Babasari. I see contrast. And there we contrast continuously. Just one more example before I move to our slides. I don't want to keep you so long. Um, the Kurds. The Kurds are just amazing. I mean, we're really confusing. On Bosch Hagan Hoveri Renkin, I saw. Das Nink San Milion Kurder Gabriel, but Magan has that image. We have Urborger Tank, Harper, Chumish Gazak, Charshan Jalak, Darker, Darker Kalakner, in Chevron, Kurderne, in Chevron, Kurderne, Kurderne. Uh, I'm not sure what language I should be speaking. Uh, uh, is that right? Urbarartai, Kurderu Gahanti Bek, you're busy as Piska Karek saying, the saying, oh, we know what you went through. Uh, we're very sorry. We were used by the Turkish government. Uh, and then they looked at whatever I came here, you know, saying, I spill a high Rukubaki, Bartik. And then there's all these fields belong to the Armenians of Chenkashir. These were Armenian fields, and we're, we're thankful to them. They, they did this thing. And now, um, and now we are suffering like you're suffering, they're saying. I don't think that's true, but that's what they're saying. For men, guys, so, nuine de kashe, kinch were took dusting to what I kashe zik. In men, kan jamanak sakhaleink, what a busy, oktakur zetsin, yabkur zetsin. That's what they're saying. So, you know, that sounds pretty good. Musko, das kail antin gertas, 
Gold, these people have come for gold and money. They've talked with us and they've hid all hidden their hidden treasures. If Terka Havadan Haruka Yurcha were America Haya or Gerta Hong Gerta or whatever, he knows where the treasure is. Yep, Sagar Guchungan and Bazarkan and Kazia, they get sweets to the Mazin Gisi. So, you know, can't tie them up, friends. We also found that, you know, that there are all kinds of people uh, among the Turks, among the Armenians, and, and so stereotypes are not. Uh, very helpful. And, uh, some of our Turkish friends today are doing far more uh, to make the Armenian genocide known and accepted than others. You know, um, uh, so what I want to do, I've taken hundreds and not thousands of slides, I just want to share with you just glimpses of historic uh, Western Armenia. I have a separate section on Giligia, which I don't think I can get to, but you know, it's fascinating. Sis and Marash and Adana, Aintab, Hajim, Zeytun, Musadakh, Antioch, all these Armenian areas and cities, which are even more um, disappeared than our carpet and other areas. Uh, so, uh, one last point. Yes, Turkey has changed. Se vasma tu na haru dali arachi arachi. Yes, arachi am kam vod kutne main te. Ye ame chabes ame inch zamote. Ye udelike, ye khamelike, ye odere, ye zainere. Everything is familiar. Even though I've never seen it, I've never been there, but everything, the foods, the sounds, the music, the culture, that was ours. And one final point, you see here, uh, about 10 years ago, I decided that I could tell in my classrooms that Young Armenians in my classroom had lost, many of them were losing their roots and knowledge of their roots. Uh, it may be that no one really knew much about Van or Erzurum or Kharper, but they all knew that they were Vanetsi, Kharpertsi, Chumishkazaksi, Dikranagetsi. They knew. Now my students, after 50 years, when I ask them, where do you come from? Where are your roots? Many of them say Beirut. Many of them say Aleppo. But I'm saying, no, before that, Turkey. Where Turkey? I don't know. I don't know. And so I started this conference series uh, 10 years ago, doing two a year, on each of our provinces, historic Western Armenian provinces. I've now gone through the his six provinces of Badmagan Hayastan, Aravel Iligyan, Aravel Bondosa, Sevzova, uh, Aravel Bolisa, Yev Berchina, Karzevani, Yev Hachorta, uh, Arten Hansnadzem will be on the Armenian community of Izmir, of Smyrna, which is the second most important community of the Ottoman Empire, and which this year, we will be remembering because it's the 90th anniversary of the burning of Smyrna in 1922 and the destruction of the Armenian and Greek communities there. Uh, that's what I've been doing in these recent years, uh, not doing original research, but uh, very hard and difficult editing, rewriting, and but in the end, I think it'll be worthwhile. I want to now just show you uh, where we've been and give you glimpses, and not much more than glimpses. So if we can lower the lights a bit, and then we'll get the next one. Yeah. 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 Y
Uh, here, here you see the, the map of uh, Turkey and the eastern half of it is where our historic Armenia is. Some of you will recognize where your home uh, provinces are from next. Uh, that's our first trip starting uh, on the Black Sea, going down to Erzurum, to Erzincan, Erzincan to Harper, Mush, Van. Uh, just, it's almost masochistic. This is the second trip to Gidinya, uh, down in the south, third. And here, uh, just last year, we started again on the Black Sea at Samsung, winning down through Pokerhai, Lesser Armenia, which is Sebastian, and from Sebastia, again through Kharkir, down to Dikramagir, then Mardin, and back up to Bon again, and finally there. Here we try to the, uh, this is uh, the Arbians, or, or no, this is Kaimakla, it's uh, Amanapurgich, the Vanka, they know it called it Kaimakla because the Arbian monks here uh, sold the cream, Kaimak is cream, they sold the cream uh, for, to, to make a living, there are seven Armenian churches in Trabizon. In Trabizon, this is not in historic Armenia, it's outside. Seven churches and a, and a Catholic church, and this is all that's left of uh, the Armenian presence. Next. Uh, this, is, it, this is the beautiful green Pontus Mountains, uh, which was very heavily populated by Greeks, uh, although there are Armenian, very prosperous Armenian communities all along the Black Sea. Next. Here is Nijati, the Turk, with his little group, they're doing their first reading of Bangla Sarah. Next. Uh, this is Gumush Khane. There were silver mines. Uh, you see the what's left of an Armenian church. And everywhere you see this, except that increasingly, even these walls are disappearing. Next. This is interesting. We're in a place called Baidwurt. I don't know how many of you uh, know the name of George Mardikin, who was an important restauranteur. Uh, this is where he was born in Baidwurt in this area, but this is one of the villages of Baidwurt where the Armenian church is still there, and usually the Armenian churches that are still there are there for a reason, that they're being used for something, storing hay, a stable, something, and this one is for, for cows. Uh, next. Here we inside uh, this uh, church. The, the, the woman in the yellow is my Turkish colleague, Professor Gutschek from Michigan, and the woman sitting in the back uh, on, on the hay, uh, this is her place now. And she's telling in Turkish to Professor Gutschek, she's saying, Yes, kidem tun ovis, tun aismartun, as he has said, ubi, achchignes. You took ye gazek, garzek, rasi ye biyar. Quite skitsek, for yes, kaire maister, says it. Uh, you know, she's saying, you're going to come back, I know you, Professor Gutschek is your daughter, she's going to, we're, you're going to try to get this back, but I don't think you're going to get it back because I'll burn it before I give it to you. And talking about contrast, you're going to meet them all kinds. Next. This is Bible, you see the great fortress there, next. And now Erzurum, my wife's family is from Erzurum. Erzurum is a, Erzurum, Harper, Mush, Palu. These are all plains, they, they, the main city, and then all around are the villages in rich farmlands. And uh, you can see how big it's become, uh, almost 400,000 people now. Next, uh, Main Street, next. Now, this is now the village of Tsitov, it's my wife's father's village. Uh, before he died, uh, together they wrote a memoir and were able to recreate the map of her, his village her village and his village, about 15 or 10 miles north of Erzurum in the uh, Garnotashta. And here she has found her father's home. Next. And inside that home. Next. 
And here they are now, the present uh, occupants. Uh, you know, but talking about contrast, how can I hate them? How can I have any animosity for them? They're uh, innocent little girls. Fanta, orange, you know. Uh, and here they are now, the, the present owners. Next. This is the next village over from Cito, and you can see the storks, Arakil Nera. As Kyora had a crumbad nutunone, Cito, the Vice Kyora Irame, Yen Kilometer in Chape. They're only about a mile and a half from Cito to this Armenian village of Arzati. Uh, but they were not on good terms, these two neighboring villages. They would not allow their girls to marry fellows from the other village. And perhaps for good reason. Uh, Zito was, I think, 100% uh, apostolic. Zor. Zor Chagamein. Is Kais Arzatin. High Catholic. High Catholic. Next. Here's, uh, I talked about the uh, Girch, the uh, gorge of Kemach on the upper Euphrates River. Uh, the Euphrates in some places is very wide, some places is very narrow. It goes uh, very rapidly. And this is where the uh, Armenian women and children were marched from Trebizond, from many other areas in the east, and where they had no escape. They had the Kurdish groups and the Tishkida, uh, the Masasay, the special organization of the young Turks to kill the Armenians in this gorge. Next. Now, this is the uh, a beautiful uh, a city uh, of Agam. Uh, it's up on the top of the uh, mountains here. Uh, Agam is known for its uh, Armenian intellectuals, uh, many some of whom went to Istanbul and became very noted writers. And, and you can see how pretty it is. Ag. Ag in Armenian means a source of water. Agam. So this is a source, Akhpure. And you'll see uh, next, here's one of a hundred different streams. Bach, Hamov, Chur, coming down from the um, mountains of Akhpure. Next. Here is, was the Armenian church. Fortunately, today, it's being used as the city museum. By Skadesnik, for Hagagan Gamara, the Armenian arch. Yevgadesnik, Gamara, and Daga. Uh, the Lamb, the Lamb of God, or the cross was here. You can see even where it's been removed. And, uh, but still, perhaps we're fortunate that it's being used for something, and the building is still there. Next. Uh, and, um, I'm just keeping very fast. Uh, the, the, for example, all the homes around there, Professor Gocek, in God and said, Asam Pulura Hayu Gansas Dunera. They say, Inchfeski, this is a Paide, Sira Kurza, I'm Bessa Paide, or Turk Chepe, Mia and Hayaka. Next. This is Harper. Elazig is Harper. Many of you know, American Armenians, many of them came from Harper, uh, the old community in Boston. Uh, and so forth, came from the region of, of Harper. Well, and talking about contrast, we're staying at a hotel owned by a Kurd. And he does not afraid of showing the old pictures of Harper. Uh, next. Including those with Armenian writing on them. And uh, if you're close enough, you might read Armenian. It's not all there, but it says, Amerikian Nishoni Shengera Harper. The Americans at uh, Euphrates College here, attended largely by Armenian students on the upper city. And here you see it, it's all now destroyed. Next. This is Perta, Harperti Perta. Next. This is the Armenian Protestant Church of Harper. What's left of it is used as a parking lot now. And here are, we are in Bosketashta, Harperti Bosketashta, the golden plain of Harper, probably the grain is why we call it the golden one. And here we went to the village of Parchans. And the women of Parchans are doing exactly what our grandmothers and great-grandmothers did. 
they're cooking in the same way, and here they're preparing for the winter uh, cooking zar, that is, baglush, the Next. Um, this is my mother's village. When I used to go to Armenian picnics in California, you know, picnics, the Armenian picnics. In California, they were very large. Every village, every province had its picnic. And they would send the proceeds to needy people of their own village living in orphanages in Syria, Lebanon, and other places. Well, every time I went to my grandfather's village, and my mother's village, there was always a large head of cabbage hanging there. Uh, uh, I, I recognize the cabbage. Uh, they used to say in the old timers, I come as And it was true that it got so large that they had to slice them in half to put them on the mule, on two sides of the mule, to take them to the market. Well, here is just beginning. And I have to confess, um, many of us who have traveled here can only sort of survive by not being ourselves, by getting outside of our bodies and being observers. Because if you take everything too closely, you, you just can't take it. So I was sort of an observer everywhere and not being, but when I saw my mother's village and saw her Vahana, I uh, sort of lost myself and I ran to the cabbage through the water and mud. That's all. Chamuri mention Ansang to see my mother's cabbages. Next. And here's one Armenian lady on the left, and another Armenian lady on the right. The one on the left still speaks Armenian with our nice Harper dialect. The one on the right was married to a Turk when she was five or six years old. She's a devout Muslim and knows nothing about Armenians, except that she is an Armenian. And talking about identity, she's come to another Armenian family there to ask them to find a bride for her son, whose name is Mustafa. I think it's a good You know, strange. Next. Uh, this is Pulak Yul, the is of Harpert. Next. Now, this is my father's village, which is probably the saddest. My father's village is known as Buzmashen or Buzmashen. Uh, this, this is the bottom of the, or the, where the, where the altar of the Armenian church was. And again, Kurds dig these places because they think they're going to find treasures. Next. And here are the uh, current um, neighbors of the Chorkiach, Kurdish women. Next. And the city has grown very large. The Kurdish families are very um, numerous. And this uh, kind of building has come to within a mile of my father's village, which was before about 15 miles from Nazareth or Hartford. Next. Zulf, the couple of has lived here on their way from Sepastia to Gilidia. Next. Here's Palu, the plain of Palu. Uh, anyone from Providence will know that name. There are many, many policies in, uh, in uh, Providence. And here's the beautiful plain with about 50 Armenian villages. Next. Uh, this is Dersim, uh, which is north of Harper. And I had to see Dersim because my father, as a teenager, when the genocide took place, and they took his father uh, to the army uh, where he was killed and his mother and two-year-old pregnant mother and two-year-old brother Gabriel were sent on the death marches never to be seen again. He was taken by Kurds because he was 12 years old uh, or 13 to work like slave labor. And when he fled, he fled uh, because he had heard, I don't know how they heard, where Rusneri Egazen Minchereev Zinga. These are not the regular Kurds, these are people known as Alawis. My father, along with other boys, was able to get to 
Erzingon and then to Erzurum, join Andronic in the resistance of Erzurum, and then, you know, Inchkid and Nasteris, that's the Lutta, the Kandara. You have me, I'm not a big fan of the Sabi, 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 Turkey has started to watch over the Yakus party. But it's high as he shall be. Maya, Yakhbari, Maren, Spanets. We have Gazas to kill Jihai Terazir, but he had done it. He had killed a Turk when he was only 17 years old. Next. This is an interesting event in Nurhaker. Everybody talking about identity. Everyone wanted us to see this family. They took us about 10 miles out of the way because the woman on the right was about uh, two years old or three years old in 1915. They uh, kept her, they made her a Turkish or a Kurdish woman, a uh, full-blooded Armenian, and people there 100 years later are telling me this is an Armenian woman. And you can see her daughter was not very handsome, and but her granddaughter, look at the granddaughter with the green, uh, you see the Armenian features and Armenian eyes, very prominent in there. Next. Uh, this is, of course, Sukkaradet, Mashur Sukkaradet, Sultan Sukkaradet. It was a huge monastic complex in Mush, uh, very famous. Uh, you can see all the Chatzignev, the cells for the pilgrims who would come. Gumanayin, on Shabbat, Gumanayin, Gumanayin, Uchta, Ucht, Gumanayin. Gerkein, Gabarein, Yerzi, Gerkein, and that is Sukkarabit. Next. This is currently Sukkarabit, a totally Kurdish village, um, and they've torn up everything down to build their houses. Next. Here's the plan of Sukkarabit. Look at number 17, it still exists. Next. And this is 17. Gober, Gabarein, I. Bashimesh. Next. And you can see this beautiful stone that the Armenian Masons had built the church that goes back a thousand years or more. And you see Khachkars and other kinds of decorations, Armenian decorations in the walls of the churches. Next. Here, this is in the wall, a Kurdish wall, uh, done by an Armenian sculptor. Next. Next. And this is Arakelotzvan, also Mushune, as Yerbu Metzvan, Kira Yermanatsaze Mekkar. Next. Now, this is the city of Mush itself. Had seven Armenian churches. Next. And this is the old Armenian quarter of Mush. Next. You can see one of the churches that remains. Three of them have been converted to Mosque. Next. This is now, I want to stop just for a second. I'll um, tell you, in Mush, uh, at the hotel, a man came to see us, and um, speaking through the, those of people who could speak Turkish at our table, I saw an Imanunas Hikmet. He is a pharmacist, but in the 20th century, in 21st century, he has a computer and he's using the internet to learn everything he can learn about Armenia. He knows what's going on in Armenia. He knows the relationship between Turkey and Armenia. And he turns to us and says, you know, I am a full-blooded Armenian from Sasun. My mother and father in 1915, my mother went on Oxford, but she came back. My father converted to Islam. Yet I can't have that sell Islam to that He became so devout. But Haji Katsaza, Mekai Haji Katsaza. You know, the Muslims go to Mecca, they don't go to Jerusalem, they go to Mecca, and Mecca Katsaza, Haida, or the Vice Haida, Larry. In my Hikmet in the heart school. To Kaye, it said, Inchu checked in our Zana Zanel, Seth Askutun, Yergurk. I said, Inchu, yes, chamber not a high low, Yemia Jamanak Islam. Why can't I be easy? Why don't you understand that there's a difference between race and religion? Why can I not be an Armenian Muslim and be accepted into this? You know, that's a very uh, iffy question because Christianity and the Armenian identity have been so closely identified by Smyusko men at the Madad Zeng. On Asfalt Stenik, don't you think? We accept atheists, right? But, but 
To accept a Muslim, that seems to be difficult. Anyway, he posed an important question, because now, as you know, there's a movement among Armenians to try to win back the Hamshim Armenians of the Pontic region, where probably there are 50, 60,000 of these people who were converted to Islam 300 years ago, but still maintain an Armenian dialect, especially the women have maintained their language. Next. Bitlis, uh, William Sarayan country, next. And here we are, it's in a vale. You see the Armenian homes that go up on the side of the hill, next. One of the uh, seven Armenian churches of Bitlis, that's what's left of it, next. And you can see the Armenian inscription still there, next. Banazola, next. And uh, at that time, the Turkish government was renovating the church of Subhach, a holy cross, on the island of Akhtamar, built by King Gakik uh, of the Arzurunis in the uh, beginning of the 10th century. So it's a thousand years old. Next. Inside, the frescoes were being cleaned up. Next. Let's see. Next. It's an extraordinary church because it's one of the few Armenian churches that has high relief all around it. Not low relief, but high relief. Because Armenians don't usually have high relief. You think of Oren, Karimeshi, and Wojtyl, and Turskets at Svij, precisely. Biblical scenes, religious scenes, and also a statue of little king, uh, not a, a little statue of Gagi, presenting the church to Christ. Next. And here's a Kurdish um, contractor who uh, remodeled or redid uh, the church. And here at, at a four-star hotel, you can see it says, Akhtamar uh, Kilisit. Uh, they call it Akhtamar in Turkish, uh, uh, church. Uh, they, some of them interpret it, Ak in Turkish means Jermak, white. And so some of them interpret it as being you know, Akhtamar, as not being Akhtamar as we know. That's Jermak, that's it. Next. And see, the, the tourism is picking up already. They're making these four-star, five-star hotels all around the lake. Next. Here you see the rock upon. Look at that huge outcrop. Of uh, that, where the Uartan civilization uh, and Armenian civilization uh, was born and spread, and right underneath uh, the rock is uh, Olvan, Kalak Mechi, Kalak Emet, is it Kalak Mechi? Kalak Kalak Mechi, Rayo. In Iskola, looking closer to us, is the very uh, beautiful. Uh, neighborhood that was known as Aikistan, where the vineyards were. Uh, I think it's Kutgen Mahari, didn't he write? Aikistan at Ayrubumen. Next. Here's the fortress of, uh, the Wartan fortress of Kvang. Next. And this is the old city, which was burned in 1915. Uh, also burned by the Armenian defenders when they had to leave, when the Russians forced them to leave. They burn part of the city, and it's now, just now, beginning to be rebuilt. You can see two mosques that are being rebuilt down in um, the city. Next. Uh, this is Barakabank, uh, up from the city of Van, where uh, numerous Armenian Catholicos and kings have been buried. Next. And uh, the next trip, uh, just last year, and I want you, maybe we'll stop with this trip. Next. Uh, now we're from, on Samsung, we went to Marzalan. I don't know if you've heard of Marzalan. It, uh, Mirzifun and Marzalan in Armenian. Uh, modern history, very important because the Americans uh, established here uh, Anatolia College. Uh, very important college. Many Armenians went to it. Uh, both Harper College, Euphrates College, and, and Anatolia College had many Armenian professors. Uh, the descriptions of what they did to the Armenian professors of pulling out their fingernails and <coughs> torturing to the both in Kharkiv and Marzava. Um, on the right, you see this all over. One of their main crops are poppies. And the poppies are, of course, for hashish. Uh, which is a major uh, source of income. Next. Here is uh, one of the buildings of Anatolia College, which has now been relocated. They were thrown out by the Turks, but they relocated in Thessalonica, Greece. Next. 
They just finished building the Armenian Protestant Church, couldn't use it because two months after they completed it, the deportations began. Next. This is the Armenian Apostolic Church. Uh, you can see where they've closed up the arches because on the other side they're now using it as a wedding reception hall. Next. Amasya, I think one of the most beautiful cities that we saw uh, on the Hollies River is Amasya. Next. Here you see the Armenian business home or the businessmen and their homes on the uh, river. Next. And you look down below at the river and the on both sides of the river, the uh, red tiles. Uh, this is also where the Pontic kings of the Black Sea were buried here in Amasya. Next. Sibas is Sebastia, Artemide Karabazar, Hasad Yvanzadze, next. This is one of the main streets of uh, Sibas, next. Now we go out to the villages, like Kharkiv, like uh, everywhere else, uh, there are numerous Armenian villages. And we went to this village, which is Brgni, because some of you, or many of you, may have heard the name of Daniel Babuja. This is his birthplace. Next. And this is the village of Goldun. Again, in Providence and other places, there are a lot of Goldun seas. And uh, they're very proud because from their village came a very strong Fedai warrior whose name was Murat. Sepastazi on the Murata. And this is his village and the church of Go Dun. Go, you know, cow, Dun. And there are cows everywhere. Next. And here you see how green the alfalfa is at Go Dun. And the bridge over the river. Next. And now we're in Gurun. Gurun goes south. Uh, and a very uh, small town now. In, the, in one of the volumes I've done on Sepastia, <coughs> one of my authors from Cairo. Uh, wrote of how important this city was for uh, uh, Armenian industry of making shawls, Armenian shawls. And so when we went to Gurun, and I looked for shawls, and all they said, we don't have any, uh, since the Armenians left, we can't, don't have them, but we have shawls that came from China. We'll sell you at a good price. Uh, next. Here's the Armenian church, a small town, but a big church. Here you are. Uh, talking about contrast, the Kurdish family here is up. Mezi Paradevik, Mikhail Shegyas in the Bahim says he had more. Next. Here you see the church, how large it is. Here, Gudin, next. Malatya, this is the birthplace of Harandi, now 400,000 people. Next. One of the uh, tree uh, lined uh, city. Next. This is the Armenian church of Surp Yerov Tutyurnan. Anyone from Philadelphia knows that in Philadelphia there's a Surkiyar Institute, the Holy Trinity Church, and the other church in Philadelphia is Surkiyar Institute, and both of those churches existed in Malatya because many Malatyatsis moved to Philadelphia. They brought the names of their churches back, just as my father's people, many of them ended up in a factory town in Massachusetts that's known as Whitensville. And in Whitensville, all the Bush missions there, when they finally made a church, named it again for their church in their home village, Supasvatasi. Next. This is another story. No, not many of us remember that right after Hanan Dink was killed, uh, fanatics went out to Malatya and uh, tortured and murdered three Turkish Christians. Three Turks who had converted plus their German uh, missionary, as they slit their throats and tortured them badly. But, and, and so while the Turks were taken by their families, the, Armenian, uh, the uh, German missionary was buried in the Armenian cemetery, which still exists here in Malatya, and where the Armenians of Malatya gather once a year, not for the 24th of August, of this Next. Shunkush is on the way from Kharkert down to Dikranagir, and next. Here was the church of Shunkush, next. next. And this is where they brought all the men from Shunkush, slaughtered them here, and threw them into this pit. 
Yes. And now we're in the Kermak here, look at the number of people. Uh, there are probably more than that now. It's nearly a million people here, all Kurdish. But as you know, the Kurdish mayor of Detroit here wanted to make a gesture to the Armenians and um, agreed to renovate uh, the church of Dikranakir, Sudkiragos, Yota Horanov Yegetsir, Meshanavor Yegetsir, Sudkiragos, Borun Danika Palazzo. Next. Here you see the walls, the black asphalt walls of of Dikranagir, and many of the original Armenian settlers of New Jersey came from Dikranagir. Next. Here at the old city, Hin uh, Talgada, where you find Asuri churches and the Armenian church of Sukhiragos. Next. Here it was five years ago. You can see uh, it's been cleaned up already, but there's nothing there. The last Armenian has left. Uh, the roof is caved in. And uh, you know, it's a matter of time. And the Kurdish mayor may be a way of expressing his anti-Turkishness, uh, paid a, a very large uh, sum of money to have it renovated. Next. Here you see it already. Um, last year, the year before last, where the workmen are coming out in Zedevaza, Terazza, Gamarnera, Yeh, Next, and here we are last October, when many American Armenians joined Turkish Armenians, Armenians from Armenia, Armenians from everywhere, for the consecration, the re-consecration of Sukhiragos, Maidi uh, Gates. You know, one of the things that I've been talking about for many years, and Dikran Fume has been talking about many years, and now Armenian political organizations have kicked out. Is that, you know, before you talk about restitution of lands or anything else, which is very difficult, what can be done is for the Turkish government to return to the Armenian people their churches and remains, and you don't even have to give it to Armenia, you can give it to the Armenian Patriarchate of Istanbul, who is a Turkish citizen and could be a part of theirs. When I did this series of books on each of the provinces, I've been teaching Armenian history for 50 years, but until I did each of these provinces and got pictures for each of these provinces, I did not feel the magnitude of what the losses were. The Brotsneta, little girls with their white ribbons, orchestras, dramatic groups, um, scouting groups, uh, every kind of advanced organization and schools how much investment, you know, when they talk, what did the Armenians lose? I cannot put a price tag on it. It's, today were billions of dollars that was lost. Next. They're going southward now to, uh, again, over the Tigris River that goes down south to join the Euphrates far to the south. Next. And now we're in Mardin which is the farthest southern area of Turkey, where the population still speaks Arabic. So they speak Arabic, Turkish, and Kurdish here. And the Armenians um, here were 100% Armenian Catholic in 1915. Uh, they had their Arashnark, whose name was Ignatios, uh, who was martyred and tortured to death. Next. And this is Mardin next. Here is the Armenian church that still remains, the Armenian Catholic Church, Supovsep uh, Kilisesi, uh, built in 1894 by a very well-known architect. You see that it's still functioning. Next. And here is the uh, Arach North that was tortured to death in 1915. They're now brave enough to put his picture there. Uh, the Pope, the papacy in Rome, has now uh, in the process of beatifying him as a martyr. And here, uh, this is Maheri Dura. Uh, it's a very important in uh, Armenian's uh, epic, uh, Maheri Dura. And they're all British children here. I don't know how many families. But an old man came up to me and he said, in Turkish, they say, why, we knew we were Americans, why doesn't your president help us? And I, you know, I said, what do you mean? We give you billions of dollars every year to Turkey. No, 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 they said. I don't mean Turkey. I mean us to us Kurds. Why don't you help us Kurds? Next. 
Bedry is north of Bonn, uh, going toward uh, Mount Ararat next, and I've skipped it uh, here. This is a, the um, suspension bridge that went back and forth, I and mean, you barely could keep your balance. You see down the you know, circle of someone on her hands and knees trying to get across the bridge because it moves so that way. The beautiful waterfall. And uh, here you see Armenia in 19, 19, 1920 where you see Surmalu, Gavazman, Olti, Kars, uh, uh, down to uh, Ani. All of these areas were, or Ani is not there, but all the areas you see there with the dotted red line to the west was a part of the First Republic and has now lost. Next. And here we are in Ibdir, uh, Averi Saharunian, and Droz, home, and you can already see the buildings here, they're in the old Russian style, and the, you know, imperial style of building in the 19th century. Next. 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 Here, um, again, Russian style buildings throughout cars. Next. The great fortress of cars, which shamefully the Armenian army abandoned in October 1920, uh, surrounded by General Karabeki, but did and could have stood but didn't stand and fled. Next. Karzi Arakelotsi Gelsin, the Church of the Holy Apostles uh, of Kars, right underneath the fortress. Next. And you can see the apostles up at the top of the dome. Next. Uh, had been converted to a museum, now converted to a mosque. Next. This is the home where Yevishe uh, Chayas was born, very close to Arakelotsi. Next. Here we see the modern city of cars. Next. And Ani. You can see uh, Ani on three sides is Anari. You can't approach it. On one side is the Ahuryan or the Akpachai River. On the west side is uh, great ravines. And so the only place where there could be an attack would have to come from the north. And uh, when um, Asho III and his son, Sambat, uh, kings, came to this area, they reinforced these walls and they made double walls. So that if you got over the first wall, you'd have another big wall in front of you. Next. And here you can see, you see the two uh, first, uh, first wall and then the second main wall for defense purposes. Next. Here is Ani. Um, it's hard to imagine, but there were, um, it was one of the largest cities in the world uh, at that time when European cities were very small. Uh, Ani probably boasted upward to 100,000 people, some would say more. It's fabled for a thousand churches or a thousand and one churches, maybe not that many, but nonetheless a very prosperous area. And we can still see streets where the workshops were and so forth. Next. Here is Ani. Next. The Mother Cathedral and the Church of the Redeemer, uh, Surpovich, in very fragile uh, condition. Fragile. Earthquakes, uh, toll, take a very heavy toll, including the 1991 earthquake, and including on the army inside something that should be stopped they are quarrying for tufa. Kara, tufa, kara, and they were going to just be matzo. They were on bush, getting a bit sensitive. They were sensitive, shut water. Next. Here you see the church. Next. 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 Here is a statue of King Gagik we had in 1919. The Turks took it and uh, it's been destroyed. Next. Next. I'm just going to go through some of the churches of Ani without giving you any uh, architectural or art history. Next. And there is a whole city underneath uh, Ani where uh, subterranean passages, subterranean homes, which are really very nice. If you've ever lived in a cave, they're quite cool in the summer and they keep quite warm in the, in the winter. And there was a whole city, a subterranean city of poor people who lived underneath the city. Next. 
And here is the Ahuyan River, and uh, 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 the uh, Church of the Virgins here, and, and the uh, river that separates Armenia right on 100 yards over there on that side from Turkey on this side. That's why it's so painful. Next. And this is an interesting church of uh, Pricko by Tigran Honen, a merchant, and uh, uh, kept in pretty good shape with a lot of internal painting and frescoes. Next. Next. Inside the church. Next. Next. Here you see the Armenian side and the quarries. You see the tractor. You see the guard towers. That's on the Armenian side, and then right below us is the river. Next. And uh, on the way back to Kars Davidevank, that has been used for storage. Uh, next. And here is the land that Armenia had in 1919, with hundreds of thousands of cows and horses pasture lands, beautiful green lands. And that's why you know, it's really painful to see now. Next. And Sarakamish is where it all began the genocide because of the failure of Enver Pasha to try to take the Caucasus. Next. And this is a statue to the 80,000 Turkish soldiers who died because of Enver Pasha. Next. And the great forests that were of Sarakamish that were part again of the Armenian Republic, which have been lost. The trees and forests, which are so important for building. Next. Um, now, this is the third one. I don't think I'm going to show it to you, but unless you just want to go through a five minute just to see it. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it's, uh, it's too late, I think, but I'm going to get it. All right. So look, uh, this is going to go fast. I'm just going to show you and give you the names of the towns, which may be familiar. Uh, the Gilead trip. Next. Uh, that is Mount Argios. Argios is, uh, any, if anyone comes to guess Argios, they don't talk about Mount Ararat. Argios, now, that's their holy mountain. And because you can see it around for 50 miles. Next. This is Gesaria Church of Sukrita Rusaborich. Um, not in a very good neighborhood, high rise, very poor urban planning. Next. But still belonging to the Armenian Patriarchate. Two uh, rich, Buster lawmakers in Istanbul from Gesaria are paying for the renovation of this church. Next. Uh, you can read in Armenian here, maybe. I think it says Gumishan. Uh, Gumishan, built in 1868, right next to the church. Next. And here are the Poshas, the gypsy women, that sit near the church. Next. Now we're up, uh, we're up uh, above uh, Gesaria at another American college of Talas. And it was a beautiful Armenian town that overlooks Gesaria. Next. Here you are from Talas, looking down on Gesaria. Next. And here is Argios from all sides. The Argios in Turkey, in Turkish they call it Ergios. Ergios. Next. Here is uh, Everek. Everek Sultorosi Gerzin, where Imam was getting the Aspazer. Next. Aspazer Chumani has a story. First of all, all Armenian churches that are converted to mosque, you look where the altar was, it's not, there's nothing, they're always empty. Because the Chatbe, looking toward Mecca, is on the side, you see. So all, everyone going in looks in the direction of the side because that's directed towards Mecca. Uh, and whereas the Armenian church has an Armenian fresco under a board uh, that they uh, nailed. Next. Uh, my in-law, my, my Hanam is cut from Chumaklu, which is a small uh, village there. Very, very depressing village today. Next. This is one of the two Armenian churches, uh, stable, manure, all over, very bad. Next. And you see the Armenian inscriptions after a hundred years. Chach, Chacha, Tartsavats. Next. Uh, now we're going southward to the Taurus, Davros, Lernera, right on the other side of which is Hajim. Next. And we're just the road to Hajim. Next. And here it is. Now it's known as Saim Beli. Uh, no longer the large city of 30,000 that it once was, about. Um, 6,000 people, and those of you who are, I don't know if there's any Hajjans here, but they, uh, 
They were deported and came back in 19, 19, 19, 20, and then were abandoned by the French. And they held out for eight months, all by themselves, the Hajjansis, from February to October 1920, when they were finally overrun by the Turks and massacred. And there's a little river there that some of them came out. We have a priest in San Diego, his name is the Tatulian. And uh, his mother, all her life, she was living in Reedview, which is in California. She had a bullet in her heart her entire life. It didn't kill her. But she lived with that bullet from this time. Next. Look at the school built. You know, sadly, you see these schools built in 1912. How much time did they have to use it before the final end? Next. Here's C. Son, my volume on Galicia, Armenian Cilicia. This is the photo I use there. This is the great capital uh, fortress of the Takavor, Gilegian Takavorchian, of the Rubinian, Slavonian uh, uh, dynasties, uh, Hetumians, and this is the fortress of Sis. Next. This was the Catholic Osset of Gilegia. You have all heard of Gilegia, the Catholic Osset, now in Antilias, Lebanon. Uh, this was Saint Sophia. I haven't heard that much for an Armenian church being called St. Sophia, but Sophia, wisdom. Uh, and that was a huge complex right below the uh, fortress. Next. This is what's left today, uh, uh, St. Sophia, as Sahak Kapaliotkos Kavayan moved uh, southward and ended up in Lebanon. Next. Next. Here you see Cis, next, walking up to the fortress. And in all these areas, the majority of the population, Armenian population, was Turkish speaking. They had lost their Armenian. They said their prayers in Armenian, and they read the Bible with Armenian letters, but in Turkish language, in Armenian, Armenian Turkish language. Next. Nairwakun Hostel, Badr, Perti. Next. Uh, this is uh, now in Adana. There's a very wealthy family that made its money off of Armenian lands, uh, the Sabanja family, multi-millionaires and billionaires. Adanatsian, in Marta Buzerov, in Bolisi, in Naman Muski, and this is the church or the mosque, mosque that the Sabanjas have built for Adana. Next. Here is the old Armenian quarter in the clock tower that was built by two Armenian brothers. Next. This was Adana in 1909. Next. This is Adana in 1909 after the Adana massacres in 1909 when 30,000 people were killed before the Great Genocide. Next. Uh, you know, again, you feel a little guilty, but not too guilty. It's about 12 feet long. And uh, you can see. Next. Mersin, nothing left, but look what they have in its place now. Next. Here. Hilton Hotel, right on the seacoast. And this goes on for miles and miles with millions of tourists coming to this area. I think the Nachan Sink, Chapelbots. Next. Uh, Korikos, this was a fortress of King Levon, and it remained in Armenian hands uh, even after the fall of Sis in 1375. The Lusignans ruled from Cyprus, and this was their fortress. Next. 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 Uh, this is Tarsus, St. Paul of Tarsus, you've heard of. And this is the American high school, uh, it used to be known as St. Paul's Academy. And now it's uh, the American school. Next. The Arme Again, look at the Armenian church. You can tell it was an Armenian church been converted with a mosque, uh, with a minaret. Next. And again, they entered the church from the side. Next. And again, you know, I say everything is familiar to us. Look at those nice chorags. What did the Hamera miniature have? Not sure. Next. The, the, the Cilician kingdom had 
a uh, hundred different fortresses, and I learned this lately from an art historian whose name is Edwards, Robert Edwards, who used to be at Dumbarton and Oaks here, where I spared you know, we had Gabgabahe, Munis Gabriel, Krishna Minerica, Bano, Reflector Nero, Abagi Nero, with signals, they would signal, like Indians had smoke signals, the Armenians had mirror signals or with metal signals where one fortress could speak to the other one. Next. Uh, Dortio. Dortio is uh, an area of... Uh, uh, that's your mother. Uh, Dortio is a very proud... Uh, here the Hanjagian party was very strong and they defended Dortio in 1909 but they couldn't defend it in 1915. Here is one of the two churches of Dortio. Next. You know, we have Musaba, this is the village of Bit Bitias. Uh, Musaba has six Armenian villages. I used to think it was sort of dry, uh, but look at how green it is. It's now a summer resort. Next. Bitias is Armenian church. Next. You know, the Armenians stayed here until 1938-39 because the French in 1938-39 took it away and gave it to the Turks uh, in a rigged election. Uh, and so most of the Armenians left. And the people from here went down to Lebanon to a very dry area known as Anja. And they, and it was malaria and all around them, but they built their, you know, again, their apple orchards and so forth in Anja. Next. Uh, Ulumnozuk, this is the uh, village where Lebanon David Rusin's family came from. Next. 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 This is a Khadrbek, and this picture, there are people who have a, pictures from a hundred years ago, and this tree was still there in Khadrbek. Next. Uh, this is the only Armenian village in Turkey left, is Bakov. Uh, there are only about 30 homes here, most of them old age people, but it uh, remains an Armenian village with its own Armenian church. Next. Here you see the new Armenian church of Bakov in the area of Antioch in Musaba, one of the six villages. The only village that didn't run away, I mean, didn't leave. Next. And here you see one of our travelers from New Jersey with two local uh, Musabaxis. Next. Well, here's Musaba from where the Armenians went up to the mountain to defend themselves for 40-some days. Next. And where they came down to be rescued by the French vessels. Next. Now we're in Kilis, going north toward Eintal. And this is a Chaglasian mansion. One person, Armenian, told this. It's now a trade school. Next. And this is the church of Kilis. Next. This is Eintal, the Armenian church of Surpasvaz, a beautiful, beautiful church. Huge. If you've been to Etchmianzin, Etchmianzin fits in this church twice. Wow. Uh, and built by the Eintopsies. They had several churches, and they were very strong also. Protestant Armenian community in Aintab. They had three churches, Arachi, Yerbrok, Yerov, Avedar, Anagam, Yegir, Yatsinir, Yerov, Aysirim, Aintab, Maile, Yatsinir, Surpas, Vodasir, Aysur, Kav, Virchu, Pandi, Yerazetzin, Ima, Nozgiti. Next. Here you see inside. Next. And here are the Armenian merchants, I mean the Armenian wealthy classes. Vorkhan Erumein, Haida Khan Erumein, Look at this one Armenian home that is now, uh, they're, they're converting them to boutique hotels and to coffee shops. Next. Here, here's an Armenian mansion that is now a coffee shop with a great arbor. And we sort of get angry at ourselves. Oh, look, you know, as if that gives us some degree of something. Next. Here, look, this is what we found on the second floor. The Armenian lighting, and this seemed to be such a major thing for us. Next. This is uh, Zaytun, uh, before and after 1915. Next. This is the road to Zaytun, now a small place, and the name has changed. Next. Next. And this is the gorge where they threw the Armenian men down in Zaytun. Next. Now we're the last choice is Marash, uh, a, a very important also a cultural, intellectual, and educational center. The Germans, the Americans, and others all had um, schools here. Next. Here's the American school of Marash. And from here, 
1920, again, the monarchies like the Hodgensies returned after the deportations. They came back in 1919, only again to be abandoned by the French at the beginning of 1920. That's why, you know, when everyone says, oh, the French are so wonderful, they recognize the Armenian genocide. Why shouldn't they? That's kind of shark charant music, that's kind of bonus there. And this is the, from this high point, uh, an American Near East relief worker, his name is Stanley Kerr, has written the book Lions and Marash, which describes from up here how they were looking at the bombardment and killing taking place below. Next. Well, this is on a sort of a happy note. Uh, this is Professor Bakalyan, who was one of our trips from New York. And the Marashis are very famous of their uh, Dondurma. Their baba, it is like taffy, and they beat it for a very long time, and then they cut it with a very sharp knife, and there's no way you can eat it except with a sharp knife and fork. I mean, you know, like steak. Uh, next. We return now uh, to Istanbul, our last slides. Uh, I'm standing, or Bart is standing, with Haran Bink's daughter. Uh, who still tries to continue. The man on the right is Mr. Seropian, who is the Armenian editor of the Turkish news, Turkish Armenian newspaper, Agos. And finally, uh, last time before this, next, but first time I went, I saw Haran Dink alive and took a picture with him alive in his office, and this time I could only go to his cemetery and see his Kisantir at three and uh, Great. Um, this is a very fast run through of, um, as I say, thousands of slides and many more. Um, I'll admit, I hope it gives you a sense of what, what there was, a sense of what we had, a sense of what we lost. Um, and as I say, um, so familiar that when we step in this land, even though it's not ours, it's ours. It's ours and not ours. And it's again continues the confusion uh, that we have lived through in most of our lives uh, as being part of diaspora, as being part of displaced and displanted people. Um, but we'll continue today as we remember April 24th week, this week, and uh, go forward toward the 100th anniversary organizing because our opposition is thinking way ahead of us, organizing way ahead of us, and we need to be alert and well-planned and united to do something forceful and well. Well, thank you very much.